Well, welcome to another edition of The Green Citizen, our second season of talking about some of the incredible things being done by our students, uh, some of our related programs at Seneca College, some of the people we work with at Seneca. I'm very pleased today to have two of our graduating students, two of our graduate students actually, from our Project Management Environmental Program, Andrew Wickham on my left and Andrew Hung on my right. Uh, they're going to talk about their educational experience and some of the uh, amazing work that they're doing right now in the city of Hamilton uh, that's an outgrowth of some of the work that they've done uh, in the past. So I'm going to start with Andrew, Andrew Wickham. Uh, Andrew is a, uh, as Andrew Hung, both of them are uh, from Hamilton originally, from Dundas I believe. Yep. yep. And I want, the, want you to talk a little bit about your education. Tell us uh, uh, the, the fact that you did grow up in, in Hamilton, what it meant to you uh, growing up here, and uh, a little bit about some of your education uh, when you went into the post-secondary sector. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so growing up in Hamilton, um, uh, we actually grew up in Dundas, but Hamilton was obviously a big part of um, our, uh, our life, our social life, and our uh, educational um, life as well. And uh, kind of growing up here, we I've really seen the city grow. Um, we've seen it, um, especially things like James Street North, we have a particular attachment to um, because we were there right uh, as the uh, art crawl started in around 2005. And we've seen that kind of grow into something so spectacular. And kind of through that sort of inspired uh, myself at least to go into uh, geography at McMaster and kind of learn about uh, urban re uh, development and urban renewal and uh, some environmental practices as well. Um, and after that point, um, uh, we have just recently, as you said, gone to uh, Seneca for uh, project management and the environmental sector. And there we kind of, uh, relearned and refocused our efforts on some environmental initiatives and how to think uh, environmentally and more productively about, you know, some of the practices. Uh, In the field of project management, uh, how much did you learn about that? So we learned quite a bit about project management. Um, we we kind of learned a lot of how uh, projects get um, off the ground, mm -hmm. some things to look for, uh, lots about uh, environmental management systems itself mm -hmm. uh, that companies ho uh, hold, and a lot of the uh, key career uh, opportunities that there are for us mm -hmm. uh, out in the world. And uh, it was really great. Uh, we really broadened our knowledge, mm -hmm. and uh, we were happy to kind of come out and actually try to finally use it here uh, mm -hmm. once again in Hamilton and be productive and, you know, know try and help out the situation so tell me a little bit about project management I don't know a lot about it uh, you obviously went through a program in this area what are some of the essential features about project management that perhaps you already knew a little bit about that you perhaps learned more about that you're continuing to learn about what are what are some of the elements that that make for good project management um, good project management uh, it a lot of it is learning to work within uh, your scope of mm -hmm. work. Um, you don't want, uh, when you're planning a project, you have to know what you're dealing with, like how much money you have, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of uh, people, what's the environment you're actually working within, and what is more realistic, and how mm -hmm. can you get something productive done in a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, and those kind of elements really make good project management mm -hmm. in general. So uh, you kind of bring that to any uh, uh, project that you might have and say, well, how can we really, you know, uh, come at this efficiently and and come at it, produce something that is worthwhile mm -hmm. and uh, shows a difference and didn't take too much time or too much uh, cost or extra cost, uh, depending on the project itself. So those are kind of the three co uh, components that we learned uh, the most, I'd say, at Seneca on uh, how project management really works and how it functions and mm -hmm. to its best ability. Now you're, you're interning with the Renew Hamilton project, so you're obviously involved uh, in a kind of a small project management exercise in many ways. Uh, describe for us precisely what you're doing actually with Renew Hamilton right now. So for Renew Hamilton, um, Andrew and myself are uh, working uh, with uh, Renew Hamilton the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and we're part of the 2013 uh, Learning Forum, mm -hmm. and the whole Learning Forum is an event that uh, is just about bringing uh, ideas uh, and renewal projects together that have been happening lately in the city of Hamilton, and just kind of uh, bringing these ideas together so that 
future people can kind of learn. Uh, it can be an inspirational event for other people who are thinking about uh, doing renewal activities. Mm -hmm. um, our section in particular is a uh, sort of like this two hour approximately a section where uh, local people involved in renewal activities are coming together uh, and we want to highlight uh, their projects. Uh, they will each be speaking to five to ten minutes um, just about what their um, uh, project in particular is. So it can be something uh, environmental, uh, restoring a park, um, setting up a business here, and that's what we want. We want sure. people to come out of uh, this uh, learning of the challenges uh, that, that people might face, as well as uh, some really key learning points so that they know what to look out for if they have a similar renewal project. Now tell me a little bit about what your future goals are. Obviously you've got a lot of education now, you've, you're getting some practical in the field experience. You know, looking five, ten years down the road, what kinds of things would you like to be doing? In particular, um, municipalities are sort of uh, something I've kind of been focusing on throughout uh, my career, uh, as small as it's been so far, mm -hmm. but uh, and education. And I think that municipalities have a really great... Um, uh, they have a lot of power mm -hmm. um, in determining uh, the future of sustainability and mm -hmm. regeneration. Um, and uh, for me, I would like to work very closely with the, a city to mm -hmm. kind of make a lot of changes, um, a lot of good uh, changes to either infrastructure, to transportation, to local food being grown. Um, just kind of a really good practical difference um, in the, uh, the way it's set up. Uh, let me, let me, uh, you have an observation that I thought was quite astute you, when you were looking at Hamilton. The tattered flags theory, mm -hmm. or, or it's not even a theory, it's an observation. Tell us a little bit of what the tattered flags observation was and, and continues to be. Okay, uh, so I guess that brings us to uh, the James Street uh, uh, North Art Crawl. Um, and the, the story is pretty much uh, in about 2005, my, a lot of my friends, uh, not myself, were producing art for the art crawl. Mm -hmm. We go down and we would experience, um, you know, their art. And at that time, there was only a few, uh, there's about six um, shops that were set up. Mm -hmm. And it was very small, very quiet. And at that time, it was almost not a normal activity to go downtown mm -hmm. Hamilton. Um, and one of the things I used to do, and it was actually kind of poking fun at Hamilton, was as we go up and down the street, uh, just how many tattered flags there were. Mm -hmm. And every shop would have these flags and just completely destroy Canadian flags, whatever flags they were. And it was a kind of, eerie and anyways I decided to count them and uh, I think I got above 40 at one point wow. and they were it was absolutely um, ridiculous in a sense and um, but as the art crawl kept on growing and becoming bigger and bigger uh, not only did we see more and more shops and obvious evidence of uh, uh, urban renewal happening but shop fronts started to look way way better and uh, if you go there today and look uh, at the, this, the amount of tattered flags that are around, there's maybe one or two. Mm. And it's a clear sign of like, uh, and some of these places are not involved with the art crawl, mm -hmm. but it's that sense of we, we're in a place, uh, we enjoy the community, and we want to take part in beautifying the area, even if we're not taking part of the exact urban renewal project. It's all part of uh, urban renewal uh, in a way. So, I guess the message then to anybody undertaking urban regeneration is look out for the tattered flags or perhaps something similar to that as a kind of a, a theme, that, that as a symbol perhaps of improvement. Just want to thank you, Andrew. This has been brilliant. And thank I'm going you. to turn to your, your colleague, Andrew Ong, uh, in just a minute and explore some of his experiences uh, with the, the, some of the same projects that he's been through with yourself. That's thank fantastic. you very much. Thank you very much. Well, I'm also pleased to have Andrew Hung with us, and, and Andrew has gone through the, the, some, some of the same programs as, as Andrew Wickham, and uh, go to share some of your experiences. Uh, tell us a little bit about your growing up, uh, your, your affiliation with, with the city of Hamilton, kind of what attracted you, you know, what, what you found attractive about the city, and, and some of the education that you've had associated with that. Hmm. So, yeah, I, I was born and raised in Hamilton. Uh, my parents came here in 1980, so, uh, 
they set roots in Dundas, and uh, that's where I went to school. And I've always, I've always been a fan of like the urban environment, the built mm -hmm. environment. Uh, and then I went to McMaster to uh, do my undergrad in geography. Right. And there, I specialize in the urban geography, oh, and okay. that's where I got to meet some really great professors right. um, who taught me a lot about how a city is made, how a mm -hmm. city is built, and it was really inspiring seeing Hamilton and being able to go out in the field and looking mm -hmm. at you know the actual buildings going up and seeing mm -hmm. like actual progress and seeing mm -hmm. life in the mm -hmm. city. And was there something in particular that really stood out in terms of your education at McMaster in terms of the development of the city itself or? One course was at McMaster. Yeah. Uh, my professor, professor took us out downtown Hamilton and we were yep. assigned a specific area to do research. Right. And uh, for my group, we were given the Duran neighborhood. So mm -hmm. um, the neat thing was we got to go out there. We got to do um, site surveys. We got to build right. uh, maps and hmm. take pictures and essentially learn the history of the Duran neighborhood. Right. And I, I think that was like one of my favorite experiences oh. uh, at McMaster. So. Yeah. Now, you, you went on from McMaster in, into the project management environmental program at Seneca College. That's, a, that's an eight month graduate certificate program. Mm -hmm. Very kind of uh, distilled learning in a very uh, kind of tight fr time frame. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you learned about project management that, uh, that, that, that you think are going to be beneficial to you as, uh, as you go into the, into the working world, so mm -hmm. to speak? Well, as Andrew said, it's really important to understand the scope of your project, that you're not overreaching yourself, but you're also mm -hmm. not um, limiting your, your scope in whatever project you're uh, right. planning and uh, outline of, mm. yeah, this is what we're doing. This is our objective. This is mm -hmm. our end goal. And these are our milestones that we have to follow. Mm. Those are really important uh, when it comes to project management. It, it'll help you uh, essentially keep your project on track mm. and make sure that you're not uh, going off, off the beaten path kind of thing, and yeah. it keeps you focused. So, yeah. I would assume one of the, the, the most important things with project management is just how to work with people. I mean, that, that's obvious, maybe, maybe that's an obvious comment, but just the whole kind of interpersonal relationships that develop in, in projects has to be kind of central to either their success or their failure. Did, did you kind of explore some of those things and, and what were your kind of observations? Yeah, we explored a bit about, um, I guess, time management and how to interact with mm. people. And right. it's really important to understand that the in-person relationships are really important. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're, you're talking with, uh, let's say, one of your clients, uh, mm. you have that communication between right. uh, between you. And yeah. that way, you know, mm -hmm. there's like no like surprises that, mm. that come up or anything like that. So yeah, the, the in-person backpack relationship is really important. And yeah. Well, tell me now, you're, you're working uh, with Andrew uh, Wickham on the, um, a, a, an internship with the Renew Hamilton Project. What are some of the things that you're specifically engaged in? What are some of the things you might have learned uh, already in that process? Yeah, um, well, the great thing about the Renew Hamilton internship is that we actually get to go around and mm -hmm. talk with like the, the grassroots, homegrown kind of uh, business stories or, mm -hmm. you know, community stories. And uh, I've learned that, you know, there are a lot of places around Hamilton that you know, I've just mm. just discovered through this internship, yeah. and it's really neat to see you know that there's this awesome like coffee shop on this street, or yeah. there's this new community center over here, and mm. it's really awesome to be able to go and interact with uh, with these uh, individuals, organizations, and, and and. Well, you I, grew up here. Are you surprised at some of the initiatives that are happening in Hamilton? I mean, have you kind of said, "Wow, I didn't know that was happening." This is, this has been a really useful purpose just to find out some of those things. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, this this internship has given me the opportunity to explore, like I guess, uh, the more offbeaten paths locations. Right. So there there are places on Dundurn that I've uh, not thought of. Mm -hmm. uh, there are places on like Alda Street, and, yeah. and like the the businesses, the stores, the communities, the community uh, events that they have yeah. there. I was going to ask you: Is there a favorite one? Is there one that kind of really... Wow, that's that's pretty cool. I I want to go back there sometime. <laughs> um, there are a few actually. Um, yeah. We had an interview with Cake and Loaf Bakery, right? And I I was really uh, impressed with uh, their their business. Um, hmm. They're really connected to the the business the local Hampton businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, they actually provide like the, the bread and like mm. the pastries for a lot of the local restaurants. So right. It's really interesting when you go into um, a restaurant downtown and you see on the menu it says cake and loaf bread or cake right. and loaf bun. So I really uh, like that aspect. And now, the obviously internships are time certain. You spent a lot of time doing your post-secondary education both at McMaster and Seneca. 
look to five, ten years down the road, what are some of the things you hope to be doing in, in that time frame? Yeah, well, I hope with my education and experiences gained through uh, the internships and my education, I really want to work with, uh, I guess, a municipality, mm -hmm. uh, with like the city of Hamilton or the right. city of Toronto, because I, I really want to make a difference. I really want to be like the catalyst, the, mm. the part, be part of the change. Right. So, uh, work from the city of Hamilton, mm -hmm. I, I feel as though I can actually make a real difference. I can actually you know, help the city grow, mm. help re reshape the city into um, an awesome place. Well, the, the incredible thing about Hamilton is it's a growing area. It's part of a uh, of an incredibly successful region, the, uh, the Greater Toronto region. And uh, Andrew Wickham on my left and Andrew Hung on my right are, are two tremendous candidates for working in this area in the future. And I, I think we'll see more of them as uh, as these areas regenerate, renew, and and they continue to grow and prosper in the future. This has been another edition of the Green Citizen Campaign.